I'd like to ask David Stevens, BS Chemical Engineer, 1982, to come forward. David? Okay, let me put this up. Thank you all. Uh, by the way, also, we ought to say, before we forget, that it's also a happy anniversary. Because 67 years, I read on the little byline, Pinky, good to see you. Tough crowd to follow. Uh, when I was asked to say a few words, I told Kelsey the one thing I had to do was tell a joke because I can't afford not to when I get in front of people. And so this is going to be an engineering joke, and an engineer, unfortunately, uh, gets sentenced to go to hell. And upon arrival, he finds the conditions just deplorable. And as an engineer only could do, he has to fix them. So first, he goes and fixes all the toilets, makes sure they flush properly, and fixes all the plumbing. Then he figures out there's no entertainment in hell, so he wires hell. Mail orders, computers, video games, you know, everything, TVs, big screen TVs, so everybody's having a really good time now. Then after he's done all this, he's kind of hot, so he, he starts realizing it's kind of hot down here, and he finds the thermostat. So he goes over to the thermostat, and he fixes that, and he starts cooling it down. Now, at this point, hell's getting okay. So God is horrified by what's going on, and God calls up to Satan and says, if you don't reduce the comfort level in hell and get rid of that engineer, I'm going to sue you. To which Satan replies, uh-huh, and where are you going to find a lawyer? <laughs> okay, I have to apologize to Mike Maquetta. Sorry, Mike. Lawyers are just too easy for me. Now, I've got to find my prop. I didn't know Diana was going to do that. During my first day at Maquetta, in, uh, I came to college in 78, graduated in 82. My brother was a grader for Dr. Maquetta. He was three years older, also a chemical engineer from the University of Texas. And I remember being, and I, for any of you who had Dr. Maquetta, I mean, I was in awe, but I was scared. I mean, I, was, I had the fear of God in me. My brother told me to be prepared for anything, because anything could happen. So you walk into class the first day, and Peter Gilmore and I were talking a minute ago, you try to find the seat that get, keeps you the best shielded. You know, you're really trying to avoid being asked a question. And what pops out but one of these? Of course, this is one that they don't have the real kind anymore, Dr. McKenna. And I remember the eraser flying through the air. And poor kid catches the eraser, dust goes all over him. And as only Maquetta do, he bellows out, how tall is the tower? And, you know, as obviously one of us intelligent chemical engineers does, the guy goes, duh, duh, you know, like this. And Maquetta just, you know, he grills you for a second. But then what he did was fascinating to me. Because what he taught me that day was something I've never forgotten. He got you to break down how many floors were in the tower, which, by the way, most of us knew at the time, how many feet were on the first floor, how many feet were on average floor after that? And then we got within engineering error of the problem. And I remember thinking after that 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 may have been the most powerful lesson I learned about thinking on my feet, being able to break down a problem into a bunch of smaller issues, and then be able to solve it back up. And I'll never forget that. And I thank you to this day, by the way. Now, most of you recall the Maquetta Challenge. Um, you know, that, you know, when Dr. Maquetta added up all his paychecks and gave them back to the university if we would match them, and I was at a time in my life where I had two kids that were still going to go to college and was a little nervous about the financial implications of that, obviously. Uh, it, but I wanted to help at the time, but I remember I had fear, I had financial risk, I had job risk, and so I didn't participate at that time. So recently, Kelsey and I were talking, and we've kind of, uh, Kelsey Evans, by the way, if y'all haven't met her, and I imagine everybody here has, get to know her. She's an incredible benefit to this university. Uh, my lovely wife, Doris, and I were, were on a plane, and I'm going to tell a real quick story, and we're flying to uh, Birmingham, Alabama. And we're flying from El Paso, where I am now, through Houston to Birmingham, and sure enough, who do I see but Dr. McKetta? And I'm, first off, I'm in shock that Dr. McKetta is, you know, cruising through the airport faster than I am. And he's getting on his plane, and we start shooting the bull with him and catching up. And then we've been blessed to have uh, lunch with him and Pinky. And, and, and I just kind of reconnected with him. And I'm sitting there going, you know, naming the chemical engineering department 
after Dr. McKenna just feels right. Uh, for me in particular, because he's had such a great impact on me and on my, on my career, I was blessed. He asked me to uh, serve on the advisory council when Dr. Eckert was uh, running the chemical engineering department. I remember being the only non-PhD, though, because I remember that was always a stressful mode for me. Uh, but, you know, what's going on now, you know, with education and higher funding, I watched when uh, we lost professors that were taken away by, you know, Georgia Tech and Michigan and others because of the funding challenges we have in the state of Texas. And so luckily I'm in a position in life now where my, my daughter's about to graduate in the university. My son's in college. I've got some money in the bank. And so I said, you know, this is the time for me to participate. And so one of the things I would ask you to do, and this was kind of my goal here when I came up today, was if you can, participate. You know, this is something, this is a great university. It's given all of us great opportunities and a wonderful uh, education and the things we learned here can only keep going if we keep giving back to the university. So with that, uh, by the way, thank you Dr. McKetta for everything you've done for me and Pinky and you, congratulations on 67 years. Thank you. Uh, it's an honor for me to call upon Peter Benz to reflect on his friend and mentor on a personal note, Peter, I want to thank you for your leadership over the last few years as this momentum, momentous occasion has taken shape. Peter? Well, how about this for a party? I, I, I just had so much fun tonight. I've seen uh, men and women that I haven't seen in 50 years. And Johnny, you're mag magnetized all of us. Thanks so much for having us out to this little party. Uh, actually, it's better to have this big, huge party tonight because you wouldn't want to receive uh, 500 telephone calls tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm, I also want to add my congratulations for 67 wonderful years. Pinky, our hat's off to you. I really am honored and, and so pleased to be able to uh, reflect a little bit about the years that I've known Johnny and uh, now Claire and I have known Johnny. Matter of fact, every time we greet each other, he greets Claire first and then he says, Claire, did you bring your father along with you? <laughs> I don't know how many of you all have uh, had the marvelous experience of uh, uh, having a teacher like Johnny McKetta. I was fresh out of high school, and I've had one course with him, 317, which some of you all probably remember. It was over in the old chemistry building. This is still the chemistry building. And uh, when I heard some of these stories about flying erasers, I could do remember it well. I was mortified, petrified. I didn't know what to think. I was young, I was wide-eyed, and uh, really ill-prepared for all this uh, fun and games. I frankly tried to find the last seat on the last row <laughs> and uh, to get away from the dust. Your course, Johnny, quickly changed my focus. Uh, I did have one of your classes at uh, TTS on Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. And some of you all might have remembered Friday nights. Uh, they weren't filled with too much studying. So getting up for your 8 o'clock class was a little difficult. But I did learn very quickly that my priorities on Saturday were not that dance coming up, but it was to get ready for your class in the morning. And I thank you for that. Uh, it didn't take me long to change fear and trepidation to admiration and respect for you. And over the years, that has turned into a, an abiding love that I have for you. And uh, I know that I speak for everyone who ever has known you, uh, that your appreciation for them, and especially not, not just them, but their spouses and their families, it means so much to uh, have you interested. I recall my first telephone call I got I was driving to work on, uh, in Houston on a freeway. It was kind of crowded. My cell phone rang, and I answered it, and Johnny had some 
kind of wise comment about, is this buns or something? And <laughs> I about wrecked the car, <laughs> but I look forward to it every year, and now Claire looks forward to it, like someone else said. <laughs> You were a very busy person back in those years, as I remember. You were uh, heavily involved in research. I didn't understand what those rocking machines were and running pressure and volume and all that sort of thing, but you were working uh, diligently. You published a lot of books. You wrote in a lot of magazines. You traveled a great deal. Then sometime you found time to be our, our dean of, of engineering and the head of the department. But you know, really, you always gave us, gave me the impression that your first love was your students. And uh, that came through so loud and clear. You're interested in, in them, and uh, for me, it really meant so much to uh, my career, which has spanned over 45 years now. And I, I really thank you for that, Johnny. That hug that you give us uh, when you greet us, that twinkle in your eye, it means so much. It really does. We all remember the Maqueda Challenge in 1995. That was your 80th birthday, by the way. And um, I was at that point in time a little bit strapped for cash, but somehow we pulled some things together and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it because it brought together classmates that I didn't, uh, hadn't seen for a long while and uh, bonded us together in a way that was rather unique. And uh, it was really appreciated, it really was. I've got an announcement tonight. We're gonna to kick off a new campaign. Uh, I don't think you all have got the story on it yet, but uh, we're introducing a challenge for Maqueda, and it's gonna be a little bit bigger than the Maqueda challenge in 1995. This is a $25 million challenge, which is gonna go for several years, and uh, it's aimed at the Department of Chemical Engineering. And I'm here to announce tonight that uh, the department's name is going to be changed. It's gonna be called the John J. Maqueda Jr. Department of Chemical Engineering. I'm really excited about what these funds are gonna be able to do in, in, in our school, and Greg is, uh, has got a, a marvelous vision for the, the whole College of Engineering, and it just fits so well in with the, the Department of Chemical Engineering. Uh, we have so much to be proud of for our university, and uh, I, I just tickle pink that uh, we're gonna kick this, this challenge off. So I ask each of you in the months and years to come to uh, jump in on this campaign, uh, I'm not sure what form it's going to take, but uh, we're going to have fun doing it, and a very, very good result is going to occur. Finally, Kelsey, bless your heart, where are you? I don't know where, where are you, where's Kelsey? There you are. She has done so much to get this uh, whole bandwagon going, and one of the things she's done is put together a DVD for us to enjoy with some stories of Johnny, and uh, we hope that you will enjoy that. And so uh, I will just pass that on. And finally, I want to offer you the happiest of birthdays and many more to come and happy anniversary to both of you guys. Love you lots. Ladies and gentlemen, I have never met an individual who is more recognized for his personal and professional accomplishment as Dr. John McKetta. And yet this man has never accepted a compliment without giving thanks to Pinky. <laughs> Truly, John McKidd is a very special man. And I have the great honor tonight to turn the tables on McKidd <laughs> and ask him a question. <laughs> Dr. McKidd, would you please come forward to the podium?
My, what a motley bunch. <laughs> and here I am without an eraser. <laughs> I need not tell you that I've been rich all my life. When I was born, I was dealt four aces. I had a mother, a wonderful father, a wonderful brother and sister. And except for two and a half years in the coal mine, <clears throat> I just had a remarkable, remarkable, wonderful life. And then, in 43, I got my fifth ace. How in the hell are you going to beat a guy with five aces? <laughs> <laughs> I've been so fortunate and blessed that I've known people and, and people that I loved, and I had a just so many wonderful families, in the, other than my original family. And you've already met the lovely family we have today, that they call our intimate family. But to me, in teaching, <clears throat> my boys, male or female, I call them all boys, <laughs> were members of my family. And you know that there is a closeness between us that's a lot closer than friendship. It borders on love and family feeling. And I've just been so happy, always. And along with Pinky and with my wonderful intimate family, we just been blessed in every respect. And we thank you so deeply from the bottom of our hearts that you would come, many of you, such long distances, and many of you with such an important agenda to come to be with us tonight. Thank you very much, and God bless you all. Thank you. John, you're a very, very tough act to follow. <laughs> so judging from the smiles on your faces, I take it you enjoyed the video. I want to pay special thanks to Peter Gilmore for his powerful narr narration. Thank you so much, Peter. <clears throat> I also want to thank Juan Diaz, the Cockrell School's video producer, for his exceptional work on this. and to everyone else who took time out of their busy schedules to appear. There are only a few moments in life when we are presented with an opportunity to undertake something that will truly change the world. Our coming tonight as alumni, friends, faculty, and family to dedicate the John J. McKetter Jr. Department of Chemical Engineering is one of those moments. There are many thousand memories of John that give me pause and make me smile. One of my fondest is John and his Texas pennies, half dollars to be exact, which jingle in his pocket everywhere he goes. On my son's birthday, he gives him two rolls of these Texas-sized pennies, one with the inscription, spend this on what makes you happy, and the other, if you save this, you will never be poor. <laughs> in front of you tonight is a custom Texas penny, the face smiling up at you, none other than our beloved friend, John. It is symbolic of the challenge for Maqueda and paired with a web address which includes further details on the fundraising challenge and a link to watch this great tribute video. I hope it will inspire all in this room to get involved uh, in this unique philanthropic opportunity. And when we succeed, we'll follow this, 
philanthropic opportunity will succeed if we follow John's instructions of spend on what makes you happy. And our promise to you, all of you, and my personal promise, is to be wise stewards of your investments. And so we'll save so we'll never be poor. Thank you, for all, all, thank you all for being with us tonight to celebrate a remarkable man, a wondrous milestone, and a truly transformational opportunity to ensure the success of the John J. McKetta Department of Chemical Engineering. I think I speak for everyone in this room, John, when I say we've been truly blessed to have you in our lives. I want to thank you for everything you've done for me and for all of us. And I want us to uh, toast John and Pinky on their 67th wedding anniversary and a very, very happy birthday to you, John. Thank you so much for everything. So thank you so much for coming. Please enjoy the rest of the evening. And uh, I look forward to meeting with all of you over the coming years. Thank you.